Bitcoin's vaporware, dude. But why should buy anyway? On January 9th, the price of Bitcoin touched $41,000, making it one of the most valuable things on the planet Earth by unit price. And on January 11th, 2021, the price of Bitcoin was just $31,000 approximately, also making it one of the more valuable things on the face of the earth. On January 13th, the price was hovering at around $39,000. And as of this writing, it is close to, let's say, and as of this writing, it is about thirty five dollars to $36,000, depending on the hour that it is. <laughs> there are issues with Bitcoin, as you know. One of which is its volatility, which has been epic throughout its history. But that's also true of plenty of other things. Entities, stocks, bonds. Maybe not bonds as much, but you know, other art, other other equities, things of that nature can be very volatile. In this video, I'm going to talk about why Bitcoin is vaporware, but why you should still buy it anyway. So gently, lovingly, tenderly caress that like button for the YouTube algorithm and let's get started. You're watching Finance Squared and I'm your host, Derek West. On Finance Squared, we love to teach and learn about everything involved with personal finance, including, and not limited to, everything cryptocurrency related, including Bitcoin. To understand why Bitcoin is vaporware and why you should still buy it anyway, you need to understand what cryptocurrency is. Now keep in mind, I do not claim to be some crypto guru or expert. I simply got lucky and bought into crypto early in 2013 while I was still curious on the topic and was in a mood of taking imperfect action. It has since gone up to incredible heights and it has everyone, myself included, wondering where it's gonna go next. But that said, since that time period, I've taken a journey to try and grasp what the heck the thing is, the thing that is cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, all of these things. There's a lot of jargon and technical terms for techies to impress each other with. And me, being a techie insider, I'm here to help demystify the concepts for you, the lovely YouTube denizen. Hopefully I nailed it. To understand what cryptocurrency is, we need to understand what a blockchain is. And in this section, we're going to try and demystify the blockchain for you. You see, all cryptocurrencies are based on a concept, and this concept is the blockchain. This is one of those things that people hear about, their eyes glaze over, their mind goes numb, and they simply disengage from the video, choosing to simply disengage from the conversation, assuming it's a topic too plex for them to process. And they instead go and click out to a cat video that they enjoy or watch their favorite TikTokers lip sync to copyrighted music. These concepts are not necessarily too hard to grasp for the average individual. They are complex for sure, but lots of things are complex. But with a little bit of time and a little bit of mental effort, you can definitely get the hang of what these things are and learn how to appreciate them and to understand and to understand them so that you can invest in them without fear or without knowing what they are. But certainly watch videos like mine and other videos, getting opinions and facts from people that are knowledgeable on the subject and even from people who have no idea what they're talking about. You know, Abraham Lincoln once said, you can learn a lot from everyone, even if it's what not to do. The same can be said of knowledge. You can learn something from everybody, even if what you learn is that they don't know anything about the topic. And crypto and blockchain is one of those things where there's a lot of misinformation out there. To put it simply, but not completely, a blockchain is merely a distributed database. New nodes on this chain will be considered new transactions. Those transactions are validated by other nodes in the chain. Once that transaction is validated, it is copied to all other nodes in the network not necessarily in that order, and different blockchains implement those principles differently. So effectively, every node in a chain has a record of all the transactions. That's why it's sometimes referred to as a distributed ledger. Distributed because the same blockchain exists on all nodes, and those nodes are different machines across the globe. And it's a ledger because it's merely a recording of transactions. Blockchain can have a wide variety of real-world use cases upon which it can be applied to, um, from things like election integrity, you know, something which has been in the news a little bit lately, to put it mildly, to a true distributed internet, or at least parts of it. So far though, the killer app for this technology and the most widely known use case is as a currency. I have a whole other video describing Bitcoin and why it's the king of cryptocurrencies right now, you know, as opposed to why it's also vaporware. But depending on when you're watching this, it's either in the process of being edited and published or it's already done and ready for your critiques and criticisms. Either way, feel free to check it out in the video card above. But in case you want the condensed version, here you go. Since the time it was created, Bitcoin has skyrocketed in value at an almost exponential level. If you take a look at the value of Bitcoin in US dollars and other currencies, as represented on the graph that you should be seeing on your screen right now, you can see that people of all kinds are banking on Bitcoin to be the currency that will lead us all into the future. Why is that, you may ask? Well, one of the big reasons is for protection from inflation. Now, a lot of Bitcoin and altcoin investors and enthusiasts are in fact new age gold bugs. What is a gold bug? Definitely not a bug coated in gold, although that would be very cool and lucrative. 
But a gold bug is an individual who is convinced that the US dollar is going to lose its value in the global marketplace and its position as a reserve currency in this marketplace, thus causing a massive spike in inflation here in the US, leaving the dollar as about as useful as a roll of used toilet paper during a pandemic. Their thinking is that gold is a physical asset that has value, and should stuff hit the fan, so to speak, it can be used to trade, well, barter really, so that you're not left destitute like a poor Zimbabwean or Venezuelan citizen, needing wheelbarrows full of cash for simple necessities, while the price of everything around you skyrockets. In a way, these folks are very prescient. Experts seem to be split on whether or not there's going to be massive inflation from all the stimulus that's been handed out recently, and, is, and all the stimulus and spending that's being talked about and proposed in the halls of Congress. Now, while there are a lot of predictions about it, there were similar predictions in the wake of the Great Recession in 2008 that didn't quite materialize the way everyone expected them to. In fact, inflation remained at about 2% according to the Consumer Price Index. And while there are folks who make good arguments that the Consumer Price Index isn't an accurate measure of inflation, I think we all can agree that the price of bread and milk was not $1,000 at any point in our recent history. So we can safely assume that inflation was relatively contained in 2008, and maybe it will also be this time around as well. Or not. And that is what gold bugs, and now the crypto warriors, are betting on. They could be onto something. But is there more to cryptocurrency, particularly Bitcoin, that meets the eye? You see, everything in life is a trade-off between pluses and minuses. Which side does Bitcoin fall on? Well, we talked about why people are so excited about it. What are the downsides of Bitcoin in particular? First things first, is it a currency? There are questions over whether or not it is a currency that can be relied upon. To really get an idea of why, why this could be, we need to get a common definition of a currency as identified by Plato, lo, those many years ago in Greece. It's actually Aristotle, not Plato. Plato was uh, Aristotle's teacher, or it was the other way around. One of, the, one of those ways around. Anyway. Yeah, I think it's Aristotle. Aristotle on money said money is durable, portable, divisible, and intrinsically valuable. While cryptocurrency is three of those four things, it is certainly not the fourth of those four things. Is cryptocurrency intrinsically valuable? Well, that can be argued against. Is gold intrinsically valuable? That also can be argued against. Gold is actually not something that can be utilized in the same way other metals can be used, like let's say copper or platinum or rare earth metals. It's really more of an ornamental sort of thing. And do ornamental things have intrinsic value to them? That's a great question, wouldn't you agree? Ornamental things have sentimental value associated to them, not intrinsic. In terms of cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency basically is only valuable because some people say that it is. Because some cryptocurrencies have built-in barriers to creation of more cryptocurrencies, and thus they cannot be inflated by politicians, and thus cannot be inflated by politicians. But does that make it intrinsically valuable? A lot of people would argue against that. Me personally, I'm not taking a side. However, Bitcoin in particular is being confused as an investment when it should be thought of as a currency. Another thing to think about, is it too complex for retail consumers? Let's face it, to get mass adoption means that a product has to be simple to use. Most smartphones do not have a command line interface, even though that is the most efficient way known to man so far to communicate with a machine. I know Elon Musk is trying to plug cell phones right into our skulls eventually, but at this time, Punching away at a virtual keyboard using your thumbs on a smudge screen is not the most efficient way to communicate with a machine. Yet, it's the easiest way for most people to do it. It's not efficient, but it's easy. Therefore, it has mass adoption. Typing of how you want your computer to work, including your smartphone, using a command line tool is the best way to get the most out of your machine. Yet, it's not that popular because it has a steep learning curve. And why would you do that when you have dance ops to watch on TikTok? So it's the same thing with cryptocurrency and Bitcoin in particular. There are actually a couple of other altcoins that are very well positioned to be more easy to use than Bitcoin. A lot of people just don't get it. They don't get Bitcoin. And the fear of the unknown scares them. It also drives the price of Bitcoin a little bit higher. Now, I think that most people will expect that that fear is going to go away and people are just going to start to use it. Because let's be real. How many people really understand what fiat currency is? You know, fiat currency is also an extremely complex topic that very few people truly understand, except the most well-informed and well-read. Yet and still, people use fiat currency all day, every day. Something to think about. But can Bitcoin be co-opted? Like everything else, Bitcoin can be co-opted. Now, it's going to take plenty of, it's going to take most of the nodes in the network of Bitcoin to all agree with each other to be co-opted, but it can happen. And there are cases of other currencies being co-opted by governments for other purposes. See the case of the cryptocurrency NEO, which was designed to be friendly to central authorities vying to regulate and control it. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but remember, one of the main reasons why cryptocurrency is popular is because it cannot be used and its value of, and the value of it cannot be 
inflated by politicians and other actors looking to make political promises that are just unrealistic. Will it still be legal? Currently, there are legal frameworks being established all across the globe for cryptocurrencies, but it is the case that in the event that these become really popular and other forms of currency start to inflate themselves, will the powers that be determine that these things are no longer legal? Quick example, if you have a tax bill to pay, can you pay it off using Bitcoin? If you earn Bitcoin from your job, will it be subject to tax? Will those tax bills and so on be pegged to the dollar? How do you determine your tax liability when using Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency? All these things can be very complex. And imagine if you could pay your tax bills in cryptocurrency. Did you really gain the autonomy that you were hoping for by switching to an alternate currency? Another thing to think about. What are you really getting when you get into Bitcoin? One of the main reasons why people switch to Bitcoin is to escape the worst consequences of inflation and or hyperinflation, which in all honesty is a pretty savvy move. The question becomes though, and I alluded to this a little bit earlier, if your Bitcoin is only worth something because the dollar is worth nothing, are you any richer? If Bitcoin goes to $1 million because $1 million in the future is like $60,000 today, you're not technically any richer if you simply hold one Bitcoin. It's just that the one currency, the dollar, keeps falling in reference to the other currency because there are just too many of them floating around out there chasing the same number of products and services. And because Bitcoin by design is more circumspect in its ability to increase the amount in circulation, they're simply harder to get a hold of them and thus making them less susceptible to inflation. But Yet and still, you're not any richer. The dollar is just worth less. For example, when the Zimbabwe currency inflated by millions of percentage points, you didn't become any richer. The people holding Zimbabwe dollars just became poorer. The exact same scenario is bound to happen for people that are holding cryptocurrency. If the value of the dollar is inflated away, you're not necessarily any richer. You're just not holding dollars, so you're not poor. It's all about relativity when it comes to currency, which to some makes cryptocurrency vaporware. But that brings up a good point. No matter what currency you hold, you should be focusing on providing value. If you provide value to someone and you ask for something fair in return, you should be able to get it. For example, for example, focus on starting your side hustle. Focus on getting two or more income streams. Getting two or more income streams going is a fantastic way to ensure that you grow your wealth and influence and help to diversify your income sources so that you're not just dependent on a job or a retirement savings check or worse yet, on a social security payment. And in this side hustle, Make sure that you accept both regular fiat currency or Bitcoin or Ethereum or or Ripple or any of these other, maybe not Ripple, or many, or any of these other altcoins. Or maybe just take all of the money that you get from your side hustle as Bitcoin. But the thing is, you want to make sure you are focusing on investing in new companies and new technology, whether it's through traditional means like the stock market, via index funds, ETFs, or other exotic instruments, or through things like initial coin offerings. And if you really want to get extreme, you can start a business or a consultancy and only accept cryptocurrency as a form of payment. And if Bitcoin really is vaporware, what should you focus on instead? We all know that Bitcoin has promise. And maybe there's just a little bit of hype in that promise as well. Now, is all hope lost? Nope. As a matter of fact, the future couldn't be brighter. You should focus in on what you can control. Now, we are indeed in some wild and crazy times, and it can feel a little bit overwhelming. I'm sure I don't have to go through the laundry list of stuff that's happened in the last 12 to 24 months, as I'm sure you guys are all aware of it. But that's one of the reasons why you really should just focus in on yourself. Pray, meditate daily to really ground yourself and get an understanding that you really can't control everything in your world. You can only control yourself, your thoughts, and your actions. So learn to channel positivity by focusing on the things that are positive about your life, your friends, your family, a beautiful blue sky on a crisp winter afternoon, the smell of your favorite meal, all these things truly enrich your life, much more than any currency of any kind, crypto or otherwise. And if you truly learn to appreciate them and focus in on how to maximize their positive effects on your life, you will maximize your happiness, no matter how much Bitcoin you have in your wallet. And don't forget to find a way to give back. Whether it's a generous amount of cryptocurrency or simply time and energy volunteering with an organization you believe in, the wealth you generate for yourself and for others through those means cannot be quantified and the gains in your personal well-being will be immense and immeasurable. Speaking of gains, gain a more grounded understanding of complex topics like cryptocurrency, investing, and entrepreneurship in general by subscribing to this channel, and also making sure to turn on post notifications to make sure you don't miss a video when they drop. We have more videos coming out on cryptocurrency in the very near future, as we think it's going to be a topic on a lot of people's minds in the near term, and we want to help contribute to the positive discussion around it. Just keep in mind, folks, a goal without a plan is a wish. A goal with a plan and no action is a wish list. Take action on your Bitcoin strategy by owning a piece of Bitcoin, despite the fact that it is vaporware. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.